day, you gorgeous bastards. Welcome back. Glad you made it. It's another so so production on Monday, October 17th, 2022. We're doing it. Thank you very much for joining me. If it's your first time, buckle up, buckle down. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube by searching Rob Sadri or Glad You Made It, where you can find the full-length videos. Check out patreon.com slash Rob Sadri if you'd like to fiscally, financially support the show. Give it a little boost, give it a little bump. And that's how we grow, baby. We're doing it together. If you've been with me for a long time now, two years, moving slowly but surely ahead into the future together. Thank you again for all the love and support. You know who you are. Sending hearts out there, right there, heart to heart, baby. And this is how we show it. This is how we show it. This is how we grow it. This is how we grow it. This is how we do it. This is how we grow it. This is how we show it. This is how we show it. This is how we grow it. This is how we show it. This is how we grow it. This is how we do it. This is how we grow it. This is how we show it. This is how we do it. This is how we grow it. This is how we show it. This is how we go. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is how you show it. This is how we grow, grow it. This is how we show it. This is how we grow it. This is how we grow it. This is how we grow it. This is how we shine. This is how we shine. <coughs> Excuse me. This is how we show it. You know that we grow it. Mm. That's what we do around here, baby. We have fun. This is how we shall yeah. Maybe that's how I'll grow it. That's what it is, baby. Doing it. Thank you again. <laughs> mm. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. All right. Let's get into it. It's Monday. Oh, man. What a great day to be alive. What a grand day to be alive amongst you. Boys and girls out there. Ladies and gents kicking a big... Kicking it tight, kicking it up and down the street. Man, oh man, I'm feeling very grateful. Feeling very appreciative of where I am in life. Living the dream, baby. Living the dream, literally. And having fun while doing it, too. And appreciate stopping to smell the roses. Mm, mm, mm. Love them roses. Boy, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to front on you guys. Boy, had a good weekend. Oh, boy, I had a good weekend, if you know what I mean. Boy, I had a good weekend. Thank you very much. No big deal. Had a great Friday evening. All right? That's just... No, no, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get too, too into it. But maybe we'll get into it. Maybe we won't. But maybe we will. This is how we grow real. This is how we show it. Had a great Friday evening. Thank you very much. Blessed. Let's just, let's just say this. Your boy, Friday evening... God bless. What it do, baby? Need I say more? Your boy got blessed. Friday evening. That's how it goes down, baby. Like, you know, once or twice a year, your boy gets blessed. Just like that. And it's just, it's like, oh, when it comes to blessings, I'm like a camel, dude. You know, I, I go months without blessings. And all of a sudden, oh, blessing time. Bless you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, big guy looking out thank you universe and thank you for the you know what it is baby thank you for all the love oh man feeling good not gonna lie <coughs> mm. but that's what it that's what it is man you get blessed from time and again that's how the universe works that's how the universe that's how the mysteries unfold huh you feel me yeah in five six months at a time baby and then boom, next thing you know, oh, it's like concentrated blessing after blessing after blessing after a blessing. Good Lord. But that's what it is. Some people, you know, they do microdosing in terms of blessings. It's uh, close within proximity and you're getting a little bit of blessings every day. And that's nice. 
that's actually stable bro that's how you build stability and blessedness if you know what i mean but if you're out there but if you're out there ladies gents if you're a young man or a woman working out working towards your goals towards your dreams maybe you don't have <coughs> man this is how you do it. This is how I do it. This is how I show it. If you're out there working, grinding, grinding and working, hustling and grinding out there, maybe you don't have time to invest in a, you know, long term, long, uh, long range blessed situation. Maybe you can get your blessings in little teeny tiny bits every now and again because that's the thing you're concentrated on the on the on life and getting getting it all straightened out or, or keeping it keeping it curvy keeping it curvy baby that's what it is you know we love them curves highly appreciative of them curves thank you very much oh man but that's what it is man oh to each their own is what i'm trying to say have fun i'm feeling great feeling once again, blessed, because that's what it is. Hadn't had dessert in a while, if I may, let's just put it that way. Hadn't had dessert in a while. Your boy was hungry with some dessert. Can your boy get along with that dessert, if I may? Because I, I got me a fork. Oh, I'm out there just handling my fork all day, every day. And they're like, and you hear people, they're like, oh, don't use your fork all by yourself all day, every day. And I don't. I don't, that's, not, that's not what I condone around here, but that's what, when you're out there grinding and hustling. Sometimes all you got is your own fork, maybe a spoon. I don't know what you're into. Fork, spoon, cutlery is essentially what I'm trying to get to. And you, you, got, a, you got a nice one, a decent one. Not the biggest fork, but hey, not the smallest fork out there either, if you know what I mean. We're talking cutlery, of course, specifically fucking forks, spoons, Maybe a little bit of knife action on the side, but I'm just talking about eating dessert. And it's good to have some dessert every once in a while. Mutually agreed upon consumption of dessert never hurt no one. You know what I mean? There. Who got them? Who got them? Good goods. Who got them? Oh. Got a little bit of that sugar tooth situation? Yeah, you into the desserts. Guess what? This guy. Love desserts. But that's what it is. Sometimes when you're just grinding and hustling out there, there's no time. There's no me time. There's no time. There, there's a lot of me time actually, but there's no me and you know dessert time. Let's say there's no there's no time for that hanky panky here and there because we're concentrated on the task at hand, and that is to find the funnies. That is to find the ha ha has, the joke a joke. Yeah, a little the joke a joke here, a little joke a joke there. Yeah. We try to do that together, but every once in a while, it's just like the universe is just like, hey man, why don't you take a little break for a little while? And that's, thank you universe, thank you multiverse, thank you big guy, and thank you out there for all the loving. That's what it is, man. Feeling good, feeling blessed, and that's what it is, man. If you're out there, maybe you're in search of some sort of loving yourself. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're concentrated at the task at hand, and you're a go-getter. I like your attitude, lady. Dude, keep on keeping on and that's what it is but sometimes every now and again it's just good to you know get away for a few hours do something a little bit different from the old routine just to spice it up and also it's like you know at a, at a point if you've got a fork or a spoon and you want to be consuming some dessert and you don't consume no dessert and after a while your fork be looking at you all sorts of funny and be like fam what are we even doing here you know what are you even doing here should i just pack up my bag put over my shoulder and just head on over down in a highway and hitchhike somewhere maybe down south if this because this is what it is man this is what it is but that's you got to take care of your fork and spoon and you got to eat some dessert every now and again that's what i'm trying to say that's what i'm trying to put out there and feeling very lucky feeling very blessed man oh man good solid four or five hours of consuming dessert thank you very let's let's just if we were to break it who's counting anyway you know four or five times for this guy and you know a couple of times we got her close dude a couple of times we got her close but if i'm speaking for myself five times of eating that dessert if you know what i'm talking about and she got close dude i tried i literally tried and it was good times overall really good times and that's what it is sometimes 
when you're, you know, it's it's all about comfort. It's all about, you know, first time. It's all like, oh man, it's first time in a while for everybody. And what are we talking about? Eating dessert, dude. And it might just be whatever. But the, th the important thing is that you have fun during, after, in between, and that you you try. That's that's what it is. And who's counting? numbers anyway especially on the first you know so it's what it is and you enjoy dessert thank you very much this is how we grow fruit this is how we show it it is monday after all man a lot of things are happening a lot of things are happening mm. man oh man what is happening things are moving Oh, I'm, uh, it's been, a, it's been, I believe it was, uh, what are we, we're in October 17th, as I said, I believe September 30th is officially when all the restrictions here in Canada ended, thank you very much, so shout out to all the good folks in Canada who held it down, you're, we're now free, we can, uh, we can do whatevs, we can travel, we can, we cannot travel, we can, you know, shake and bake, you know, and that's, that's what it is, baby, and we, we held it down, we held it up, and we got over it. And yeah, it feels good to be finally able to, at least the thought is there, that you're able to stretch your wings and maybe fly, maybe stretch them legs a little bit across here and there. Who knows where it will lead us to one day at a time. No big deal, no big plans, but also big plans on the back burner as always. But we take it one tiny bite at a time. Asshole first, of course, that's how you finish a big giant elephant. Did you ever guys, did you, you know, here's the thing, let's, little bit of this little bit of that you know ever ever see you know ever you know give a give a man a stool is what i'm trying to say give a man a stool give one fella a stool and what is what is what do we have here in our hands we, we got one man one stool sitting comfortably give the man one stool have the man flip the stool over all of a sudden now you can have four people on each side of the stool resting comfortably are you comfortable? Is that, you know, is that what you're implying? Is it comfortable? You know, it's too much comfort never was beneficial for anybody anyway. So what, what are we even talking about here? I don't even know, dude. But ladies, gents, you've all heard it. You've all seen it. Uh, li life is what it is, man. Life is what it is. And you get your kicks wherever you can. You get your, you get your fix wherever you can. Some people get that runner's mix. Runner's, runner's high. Some people get a runner. I don't even know what a runner's mix is, but I like it. Get get that runner's mix. Ooh, baby's on that runner's mix. You know, some things do stick, some things don't. This one particularly doesn't sound like a thing that's gonna stick, runner's mix, but runner's high. You've heard of that one, lady, dude. Runner's high. So I'm thinking, oh man, if runners get high, does that mean walkers and hikers are microdosing? See how we just like squeezing in two random jokes just oh, oh right there. That's like the little uh, Those are like the little paper cuts. Those are the little those are the little tiny those are the tiny little daggers. Just, uh, who are the daggers for? The, the runners and their highs and they're oh they're so much better than you. Oh, look at me running all day, every day. God. Keep it up. It's good for your health. Anyway, man, I'm, my point is that you, you, make of your, you, you make your day. You, you set the agenda. You set the tone. You know what I mean? You don't always got to be waiting around for them birds to be chirping outside so you wake up to the sound of chirping birds. Tweet, 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 tweet is all you hear. And then you're like, oh, it's, it must be 6 a.m. You know what you could do? You know what I does? I get up at like three, four, sometimes in the AM, go find a little, find a little nest with a little bird family in it resting with a little bit of warm, just hanging out, maybe the mom or dad's beak, getting it ready, just, just, you know, sleep chewing, getting that food ready for the AM feeding of the little birdsies. But you know what I do? I start, I start chirping outside their nest, dude. Chirp, 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 tweet, 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 waking them up at five, like three, four in the morning, just to flip it on them, just to be like, oh, uh, who's out there? Who's out there? Where's the early worm? Where's the early bird? Just putting it all out there on the table with it. That's what I'm trying to say. You can just set your own tone, how you're gonna go about your day, what you're gonna be doing. And sometimes it's all about taking it easy. Nice and easy, baby, nice and slow. And we, we tend to like it nice and slow. 
we tend to over here we tend to like a nice and slow we're like that molasses drip drop drip 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 drop very very slowly oh oh viscosity up in this bitch look at it just drip ever so slowly that's you and me right here baby we're the iv drips of podcasts forever lasting until of course the old IV satchel runs out of the good good and then you got to replace the old bag of liquids with another IV bag but the the system works what I'm saying the drip drip baby the drop the droplets work okay sure you got to like empty your bag to be able to fill it back up again every once in a while and that's what it takes just letting things take its course one drop at I don't control these drip drops baby I don't control them I just let the faucet loose and it just be waterworks. What are we even talking about right now? It's Monday. This is how we show where this is how we do it. Baby boys, baby girls, it is Monday. Man, oh man. I, I, yeah, if I can just, you know, for a second, because on Friday evening, if you, if you, and, and these episodes are everywhere on the YouTubes, on the Instagrams, they're not related to each other, so if, you know, if you miss one, it's all good, you can always jump, that's the beauty of this show, you can just jump in, and we're like a family, just, just a family, of, and then a gang, and a, and then a syndicate who just picks each other up by the, by whatever's available, dude, you, you fall on hard times, I will not physically pick you up but like mentally metaphorically speaking i if you fall fella because it's that season where things be you know it's wet outside it's getting wet outside a little bit you might be walking and tripping and falling i will hypothetically lift you up by the nips dude if you need a hand oh i'm a there twisting and a turning and a getting you up on your feet until you tell me hey hey I can get up on my own too, fit. thank you very much. And that's why I don't actually proceed with these thoughts, but like, you know, you see a fella passed out on the pavement. Oh, that's the au natural, the the fibrillator? You know what I'm talking about, the thing that goes like, oh, and you stick it on somebody's chest and they're like, I'm alive again, thank you. This is how we grow it. This is how we grow it. That's what it is, baby, just having fun. It's the chill Monday chill it's feeling good as i should and i hope you're feeling well i hope you're all safe and sound i hope you got some love in i hope you are you know just making progress in your life journey wherever you are maybe you're in school maybe you're finishing a degree maybe you're getting a second degree maybe you're getting a third degree man hats off to you that's a lot of degrees maybe maybe you're not fond of degrees whatsoever maybe you're the type that just like to toss it all out the window and be like i'm making my own bath water thank you very much you know you're cultivating your own culture because everybody's like oh it's so easy to just don't don't throw the baby out with the bath water you're like toss it all out i'll make a baby right there in the bath water with the bath water dude and that's you breaking norms and standards because a lot of times you'll like hear things you're like oh you can't get pregnant in water and here you are proving everybody wrong so thank you for being you essentially and also helping population growth any baby at this point really i think all i hear is populations you know teetering on the edge of like starting to drop a little bit but that's you know we still got time we still got time to bang out a few sets and just produce a you'll hear it in japan and china even in north america that's the Man, the baby boomers are now being overtaken by millennials and millennials just due to, you know, we're, we're, if I may speak for, and I don't, but I'd like to at this point in moment, uh, I think with millennials, and maybe we'll see this even in Generation Z, I think people will have, are maybe perhaps having fewer children for sure and maybe putting off having children later until a little bit later on in life, which, you know, looking around at everything makes sense a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Because all you hear is about like, oh, the, the economy and the inflammation rates. Oh, everybody's feeling the inflammation, man. Everybody's bloated, everybody's inflammated. You know, how do you feel about the inflammation in the economy? How do you feel about the, you'll hear these terms. Oh, the irrigation in the economy is just like, oh, it's on the rise. You know, the, Irrita oh, irritation in the economy, you'll, you'll, hear, you'll, hear, you'll hear these buzzwords, these uh, socio-economical buzzwords. Oh, the 
uh, inflammation is rising and what do we do what do we do about it i don't know i don't know what we do about it why don't we ever hear about you know inflammation going down in uh economy what's up with that how come it's always on the rise dude even now i've never heard of inflammation in society going down I've never ever i've never heard of just be like news all oh, the news breaking out and be like man people are like overall housing is affordable overall you know what i mean people are making nice paychecks overall you know what i mean People are eating, nice, tight, tight. And not to say that here's the thing, I'm sitting again, feeling very blessed, very lucky, very grateful for everything that I have. But these are thoughts, these are, uh, it's not just me, it's everybody out there. I feel like we're, you'll hear another word. You'll hear another word that's, you know, been, everybody's kind of like tossing it around and everybody's not sure if it is, if it isn't, recession, if it's, uh, you know. I think you just gotta step outside and do a little bit of, you know, groundwork, you'll, you'll see. Food's definitely gone up. Uh, we saw gas prices go up. We saw, we've seen the housing market, you know, keep climbing up and up over the years. So these are things that are, they don't happen just over a day. No, silly, they don't happen over two days. You're like three days? How about four days? They don't happen over four days or even five days, dude. I've seen it happen. It takes longer than six to seven days. But it, that, that's the thing too, with that sort of thing, also a very slow drip drop effect kind of like molasses, kind of like diabetes. You don't see it right then and there in front of you, but man, it'll get you, it'll get, something will eventually get most of us, but that's, by 2030, I hear we're gonna be, you know, coming out with cancer vaccines, so if you can hold on till 2030, I think after that, it's gonna be just like, oh, man, fucking rolling and, rolling and just grooving and just you know picking up every sort of disease because now we can beat it dude that's what it is man you're going to be seeing just all sorts of people driving in convertible cars with all with all sorts of diseases but they're not faced because all you got to do is drive by go to a far you do a drive by in a pharmacy drive through grab a bunch of vaccines and just jab yourself in the arm self-administer and that's harm prevention man that's basically that's so things are looking good in terms of where we're at overall, always glass half full. We're, we're doing good things, we're doing amazing things. So I'm, I'm very, I just want to clarify that. I don't want this to be like, oh, uh, he's talking about inflammation, recession, you know? All good, dude. I'm all good all day, every day. Thank you, you know what I mean? Thank you. Having said that, having said that, there are issues that, you know, relate to me you all of us and we are one after all aren't we we're, we're all one after all you know so i've been i've been reading as of late you know we've had a little bit of a discussion about this maybe some time ago i'm talking about right now specifically about a program in canada that's kind of related to i guess recession and inflammation it's called MAID. it's called MAID. M-A-I-D, Medical Assistance in Dying. We've got that in Canada. It's a, it's a program. It's a program. I've given it some thought in the past, had some opinions in the past, and I still feel very much kind of the same, more or less. Uh, what is made? First of all, I want you to know that that is just sheer coincidence, the fact that Medical Assistance in Dying that acronym, the fact that this is called Glad You Made It, and that program is called MADE. I just don't want there to be any discrepancies and people be thinking like, oh, are you for euthanasia? Are you, you know, are you euthan am, am I euthanasia? Am I an Asian youth? Kinda, kinda, I guess. If you, you know, that's, you know, historically, if you go back into the lineage, yeah, that's what it is, babe. But like, I'm not for euthanasia, dude. I, I don't support any youth in Asia. Forget about euthanasia, dude. There's plenty, like, that's what it is. Canada first. That's what I say. Canada first. Every country should look out for their own euthanasia situation. And, like, because it's cray-cray. Because it's cray-cray. If you don't, here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. We, we didn't have this. What is it? That's my understanding of it. Before this uh, law came and before this program came, and if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to get if you want to get down in life and just be like, I'm a, I'm a plug out. If you were to, if you were to just like, oh, I'm out, dude. You know what I mean? You had to physically do that on your own. 
and it was it was a thing and it's not you know it's not a common thing but it does happen unfortunately it does happen in society you know we do have a lot of uh we do have suicides of course we have suicides but uh here's the thing we didn't have this program and this program my initial you know and i'm not saying this from a place of like i'm not i'm not you know I, I i don't know what the best sitch is but my concern initially with this program was that it'll make it so that it becomes easier for people to consider suicide as an option whether where it should be again because i am a absolute free speecher and a practitioner of absolute freedoms of expression that even though i don't agree with it is i believe a human right again you should never i think that is in my book that is that's wrong in my head that's wrong for you for your family for your community that is no bueno but nonetheless there is that human rights aspect of it again bodily autonomy and what have you and it's a it's a dicey it's a it's a these are murky waters baby watch out for them eels because they'd be just wrapping around your ankles and they're electric and now you're getting a nice buzz. And little by little, you'll build tolerance. And like you stepped out of the river, the river's no longer muddy, but you still got eels on your ankle. And everybody's like, John, let go of the eel. And you're like, man, kind of like this buzz. And what is it? Wednesday afternoon, you're in the office with eels hanging off your ankle. Maybe given some of the best presentations you've ever given. And hey, man, maybe you two have this thing that's just a winning combination, but to each their own, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not pushing eels on ankles, but if it works for you, it works for you. Point is that, you know, to each their own. Point is that we didn't have this program. If you wanted to do such activity, you'd had to go out there and, you know, man, you have to take it into your own hands. Let's just put it that way. But now there is like, you know, there is now, I don't know how it works. I did have a run in with a lady a few months ago, a few months, what was, uh, what was her name? Um, Hannah, Miss Hannah Banana. Yes, Miss Hannah Banana, if my memory serves me right. She was a nurse who administered assistance in suicide. And she was telling me about her horrible experience as a administrator of this medical procedure. I don't even know if it's a medical procedure because it ends in death. I think that's counterproductive to medical procedures because medical procedures medicine is supposed to enhance life or give life completely different story but yeah i was never for the idea because i always assumed that it just make the road a little bit easier to that end goal for some people and i think little by little we're starting to see a little bit of that and i don't again i don't know what the solution is because i can i could imagine and i had my thoughts earlier maybe this was yeah probably in university days, but things have evolved and I've evolved too. My thoughts have evolved. I, I hope so. I tell you that this is how we grow real. This is how you show it. By growing little by little. Yeah. If, if you caught me being a little bit younger, I would have been like complete no, you know, just a no, dude. You know what I mean? But like, maybe I can understand if like, uh, you know, if an if a elderly lady or a gentleman is like you know let's say 155,000 years old and they lived a good life and now all their bodily functions are no longer working with them they don't have you know control of this that and the other and it's like ailment after ailment maybe at one point or another they're under a lot of medication a lot and it's not going to get any better maybe under particular circumstances after a lot a lot of evaluations and seeing whatever else it is that we can use in our tool belt as a way to remedy this uh, particular situation for this individual or individuals involved in the matter because everybody ages apparently. That's a thing that sucks. Fucking ageist bastards. Oh man, if I could get my hands on aging. But I can't. It's a quick one, that bastard out there. But point is, I could see it now potentially in some circumstances where I'm like, okay, such and such is in you know and we've done everything that we can and this this is just the best possible route and even then you know some people are like man what happened to just like you know dying of old age what happened to just like leaving it to to biology leaving it to the life cycle the record like are you know not too long ago this wasn't even an option unless you made it an option for yourself but uh again 
it's tricky. I don't, you know, that's what it and you bring in arguments such as like, you know, they say like, oh, uh, going out with dignity and shit, which, you know, I, you know, it's tricky, dude. I don't know. It's tricky. If I was younger, I would have been like, definite no, no. Now I see a little bit of a gray area on like particular circumstances. Maybe it could be legit. Maybe it could help people. But it doesn't take away from the fact that it is going to be a tool. It is going to be, uh, or, uh, I guess, a law. And I don't know. Do these things get kept around? Could they be reversed? I don't know. That's why you guys and gals are out there. That's why we're all in it together. That's why we figure it out together, baby. So the point of this is that it makes it easy for individuals with other scenarios or other circumstances to kind of apply for this program. And unfortunately, sometimes it's not even a medical reason that leads to them wanting to opt for this option. Sometimes it's a socioeconomical conundrum that they're facing. And this is how it's all related. And this is how it's touching. This is how things touch. This is how things touch. This is how you connect the dots. Is it connect the dots? I see polka dot, polka dot, polka dot. This is how you poke it. This is how you poke it. This is how you poke it. Point is, I was reading an article about an individual a little bit further up north in the GTA. Forget the gentleman's beautiful name. Side the point, it was in the newspaper, a real life story, real life person, and I'll break it down for you. I'll give you the gist of it. Mr. Such and Such is, uh, you know, suffering from severe back injury and pain and is on, you know, and is on medication of sorts, unable to work and basically having a difficult time paying rent. There's, and uh, meeting his cost of life, essentially, on a monthly basis. And he is facing, I guess, eviction. And he's gone ahead with this condition because he can't work. He's got severe pain. He's in, you know, and these stories are real. There are people who suffer from injuries, whatever it may be. Some people, you know, physically, they may be disabled. Mentally, they may be, you know... Uh, whatever the case may be. And it's tricky, man. It is tricky, but that's the thing. Sometimes a person might not be able to work and pay their bills. So if they're faced with an option of being evicted, and this was essentially the gist of the article, this man is saying that he would rather opt for MAID, again, medical assistance in dying, than end up on the streets because he can't afford to pay his bills. He's like, I would rather, again, he's like, this is not my first option. This would not even be on my radar. But unfortunately, it is now on his radar because that is kind of the only alternative he's left, or at least a viable alternative that he can think of. And there's a process. It's not so easy to get it like instantly, but it's not the most difficult thing to get either. And unfortunately, that is now becoming easier and easier to get. And I see this kind of as an, this is what I was fearing happening when it just started to, you know, when word of this got out several, several years ago. And it was a thing. And other countries are picking it up too. If I'm not mistaken, Australia is looking to pick up this law as well. Medical assistance in dying. And yeah, to me, it just, it, it's, it makes me feel a little bit weird. And I catch myself kind of being also a hypocrite, maybe in a sense, because I am pro choice, I would say when it comes to like abortions and stuff, because I, I feel like it should be easy to get an abortion. I feel like it should, if you, you know, not an overdue abortion, you know what I mean? But that's, you know, but overdue abortions are also cool too. You know what I mean? A kid just, kid with a, kid's got a pair of lips on him. Just, oh, not appreciating 18 your kid do you know what I mean I'm not saying anything but also a little bit of a little bit of but I'm not saying anything dude I'm just saying it's your kid but I do feel like it should be okay for you to abort a child early or relatively early I'm not a doctor dude why not it's your kid is what I'm trying to tell you and it costs a lot to raise these little buggers and 
whole other but that's the thing i feel like it's okay to get abortions but i do have a little bit of a problem so i do catch myself but i don't see them as the same thing because a fully grown human is to me way different than just a maybe a, i don't know two three month old don't quote me on these things i'm not a scientist i don't know when the, it's beneficial to you know the earlier you catch it the better it is but point is like you know let's say six seven month no six seven week old baby i can understand you aborting that but aborting a full-grown human because he or she can't pay their bills that to me is that is that's whack dog that's just that's just you know that's a little bit silly willy and that's the thing first it's gonna maybe potentially start on it i think that's the way it started it may have started off with just oh no physical ailments like oh if you have a handicap of sorts if you are disabled in such ways that you can't physically work and provide for yourself then that is an option for you but now we are moving in further ahead and unfortunately there's going to be now room made for i guess uh, and again i'm paraphrasing all of this as much as i understand it there's going to be room for mental health to kind of get involved in this program as well and people suffering from mental health disorders or conditions may also apply for this program which to me these are all again uh man it's tricky dude it is tricky i just don't want to see you know i just don't want to see you know somebody just being like oh I'm having a you know whatever i'm having because everybody now that as much as i'm i'm a huge fan of mental health and like taking care of your like all aspects of your life mental health being one uh, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, all your overall health is important and mental health is important. I know I really talks about it these days, which is good because prior in the past, we never really talked about it because mental health was one of those things where it's like, oh, it's hurting inside. And like, it's easy to maybe show a broken arm and be like, it's hurting. It's, it's all oh, the arms broken. And everybody's like, okay, fine. I get why you're bitching. But if you're like, you know, walking around and mentally, you're not feeling super bueno and you're trying to explain it to people, people might, people might not see that and they're like oh this guy's just bitching or this lady's just bitching about what else and it took away from that and i'm glad that we got away from the stigma of mental health and all these things but at the same rate i do again everything everything there's a fine balance to it you don't want to go overboard with because we've seen this happen to children getting diagnosed with so many things early on getting medicated so quickly and we are so quick to just jump the gun with medication and pills and labels oh jimmy's a little bit hyper let's put him on medication let's put him on this or you know sarah's got a little bit of extra energy and she likes to goof around and maybe she doesn't sit still and or whatever it may be and these are again little examples i'm sure there is levels to everything and there are circumstances where maybe medication therapy all these things are appropriate but i am saying we are living at a time and i think this probably has been the case for a lot of humanity we like quick answers we like shortcuts we like we like the pill solution we like popping a pill to make us feel good we want that everybody wants that end result nobody's willing to just sit there and just eat a little bit of pie and smell the roses every once in a while you know what i mean everybody's just like oh give me the give me that i want to be at you know this place i want to feel like i've done this thing i want to nobody wants to actually enjoy or a lot of us tend to miss out on the journeys and want those quick results. And as a, I guess, as kind of a societal norm, it's been built into us. It's been ingrained that, you know, there's a problem with you if you're, if you're uncomfortable, if you're, whether it's your body, whether it's your mind, whether it's your spiritual health, whatever it is, there's something wrong with you. You need to fix it quick. And if you can't fix it quick, well then, you know, go overboard on medication, this, that, and the other. And again, living on this planet for 30 almost 33 three years now it's i've you know from what i gather is that we're all very diverse and unique in many different ways and shapes and there's really no one remedy or one sort of recipe for all of us to be like oh i got there's this one rule book on this thing and if i just there are the basics you know a lot of things we do overcomplicate them as well but we are unique that's what i'm trying to say so I don't want this to, where is I going with this, man? I don't even know. I just don't want this to become like a easy, you know, oh, I'm just going to unplug sort of sitch where it's like, oh, I can't work for whatever reason. I've been disabled, whether physically or mentally. And, you know, now it's like, I got to go, you know, I got to go get that made program. It just feels a little bit, 
Oh man, it feels like a little bit like one of those like dystopia. I feel like I've mentioned this before. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But a great example of this is, I guess, kind of in. I don't know if it's related. I don't even know if my memory's serving right. It's an older movie. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, was it with Jude Law and Ethan Hawke? Maybe I'm getting it wrong. The name of the movie I remember correctly though was Gattaca. If I'm not mistaken, it was set in a dystopian future where everything's kind of you know. It's kind of like new eugenics, essentially. New eugenics. And that's, uh, you know, getting everybody, get, trying to perfect the human genome, trying to make the perfect human. And everybody's basically kind of uh, divided into society and into tiers. And in terms of, oh, who's got the best physical capabilities? Who's got the highest IQ? Who's got the best, uh, you know, the, the fastest whatever? Who's got, and essentially it becomes this, like, very rigid, just again, very, I don't know how to even say it. It becomes very, it becomes dystopian, essentially. It becomes, everybody becomes a number or a stat that you could be compared to others. And you can only potentially intermingle with people from the same group or class, which kind of resembles what we have going on today in our world. There is a, you know, there's many issues that we're dealing with. And I guess... Man, I don't even know where I was going with that. Point is that it feels like, it feels like to me that people with lots of options and amenities and resources available to them would never consider that ultimate option until the very, 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 very last resort. And even then they might not consider it. And you've seen that, you, see, you, you never see any like multi-billionaires or like multi-millionaire millionaires who are let's say royals or quote-unquote royals whatever the fuck that means but like you know what i mean or like super rich you never see like an eighty-nine thousand year old royal family member be like oh i've had three kidney transplants maybe it's time for me to leave and they're like no keep on bringing the kidney transplants dude you know what i mean there's a whole truckload there's Fright of uh, like just fright after fright just coming in delivering body parts because like you know sus such and such is got the means got the resources has got some state got some real estate got some bank in the bank maybe they are the bank and that's why you see them like like shriveled up 155,000 years old with all sorts of fucking disgusting lizard skin and like patchwork and like you see fucking the new molds that are like green molds or like, you know, purple. And you're like, you're looking at him. You're like, oh my God, it looks like he's decaying. How is he not dead? How is she still alive? You've seen these cats out there. They're amongst us. And you're like, how? Through money and through resources. Why? Because if they, you know, if they get a, if you need a, if you need a heart transplant, if you need, you know, oh, you, you need a new leg. You know what I'm talking about? You got the best legs, dude. You got the best, you know, somebody you'll hear will get like five hip transplants. And they should, everybody should, that's the thing. To me, it's becoming, we're, we might be, I don't know if it, but there is this, I guess, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to be living fulfilling lives for people who can afford it, but not as much for those individuals like that gentleman that I failed to remember his name, the one in north of the GTA. You know, he might be like, oh, no, I, I, you know, maybe it's like whatevs, right? But he can't afford to because it's just whatever out of his financial reach. So, you know, that's that's a thing that is happening. So uh, we are going to be man. Oh, man, it's going to be a game changer once like exoskeletons and the chippy chip. If people start to adapt the old chippy chip in the brain, dude, and people are just chipping away with their exoskeletons and all chipped in and all fucking like 10,000 times smarter than the average person without the chip and the exoskeleton. It's going to be a thing, dude. It's going to be a thing, but I'm excited for all of it. And I think we're all going to make the best decisions to, you know, cause that, you know, it's, you don't want it to be like too easy, dude. You know what I'm talking about? You don't want somebody just having like a bad day. I'm like, man, I'm just going to walk in and just, ah, it's not worth it anymore because you could have easily just sat him down, you know, talked him out of it, have a drink, have a few drinks. And maybe you're like, you know what, this particular set setting situation with this particular individual is the drinking that got him in this situation. Maybe avoid the drinking. OK, maybe it's not time to cheers all around and be like, hey, salute. But 
maybe they can handle their own. So you know what I mean? To each their own. That's that's the whole notion of this. But at the same rate, man, if you were to like, man, play the other side of this bad boy, play the other side of this bad boy, maybe I'm a, let me get a sip of this for a second. How would I pitch this? How would I be, I'm a, let's say I'm a maid sells person and I like to maybe there, I don't know how it works, but let's say in five, 10 years, they make these, I think they already have, they have the pod systems where you can like climb into a pod, which is creepy in and of itself. I mean, man, right? Or like injections, just weird, dude, just weird. What happened to just like dying like an old prune at like 75 or 95, just like, oh, uh, it's okay, be a burden on your family, dude. You've been there for them. That's what family's there for, dog. But that's the thing, individual individuality. Gosh, when you sometimes fuck up a word and just not, like nothing comes out part of <laughs> Individuality. As much as I love it, we should still, I think, keep dear and near the notion of a family. Family. That's what it's all about. Family. Fucking beers. Barbecue on weekends. A little bit of that gasoline on that fire. Now the fumes are burning and mm, we're getting that meat smoked. Do you, want, you want that smoked meat, son? You come to the family gathering. Oh, a little bit of that beer on the old barbecue. That's that trick, son. That's that little bit of, little bit of that beer on the old barbecue. Yeah. Put another shrimp on the bobby, baby. Just fucking beer all. Dose that fucking rib eye, rib steak eye, thigh. Big chunk of meat with beer. And watch the flames just whoosh, whoosh. stay back, little Jimmy. Stay back. You're gonna burn your eyebrows. As a as a good father, which I'll have to remember that one day if I have little kids and be like, oh stay back. This as I'm pouring beer over the you know, but that's just like way into the future, dude. We're let's not get carried away here. Point is point is I'm selling this thing. I'm selling if I were to a man. How could I, how would you sell this? How would you um, justify this in society? Okay, I'm, you know, I'm selling these pods, dude. I'm, I'm selling these pods. You're gonna go in there and rock that showroom that sells, oh man, people are walking into the showroom now with, oh man. No, there won't be a showroom because I'd have to, it'd be weird to have people like come in and be, we can't, or maybe it won't in the future. I don't know how it's gonna work, man. This is a task that I'm willing to take on if I have to, so I don't want to. But if I have to, these pods, let me let me try to sell these pods to you. Are you, are you, is, hey, answer me, riddle me this fiddle, fella. Cost of living getting too much there? Fella, lady, uh, having difficulty paying your bills? Are is rent increasing every six months? Interesting. Um, and you've tried applying for mortgages, huh? and they laughed at your face because you have a student loan, maybe of sorts, and maybe a car loan of sorts, maybe. Uh, uh, that one felt a little bit more personal, but let's just try to you know reach outside the realm of possibilities. Hey, you got some credit card debt because you were investing in yourself. Uh, and you're like, man, I'm not gonna get like a student loan. I'll just get a credit card. I'm like, you know, go to school and like invest in that. And like now you're paying, God, oh, just horrible amounts of interest, and you can never pay it back. And it's man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough economical times, given that we're probably in a recession that nobody really wants to like be like, oh, this is a solid recession, dude. Because let's let's, you know, if if we continue down this path, it might just be like the repeat of. The 1920s, I like it to still be the roaring 20s and I've got hope, but that, you know, that hope is heavily dependent on level heads all around the globe. And you know how level headed we tend to be the most often in, in grand decision making and how it impacts the majority of people, you know, but that's just, that's just power and responsibility, man. What are we talking about here? I'm trying to sell something right now trying to sell the, the killer pots. That's right, killer pot 5,000s for you and your family. Having difficulty affording bread and butter and paying rent? Well, <laughs> fear no more, dear sir, ma'am. Ma You're like, don't call me ma'am, I'm 24. I just wanna be able to pay my bills. Hey, why worry about that? When we got killer pots 5,000, when you can step inside and 
oh, all of a sudden, like 30 minutes or less, we're working on it to be way less because we don't want anybody getting in there and like having second thoughts, instant killer 5,000 pods work instantly. And we can customize it for you. There's little coffee machines for your last coffee. There's a little teeny tiny supper for your little teeny tiny last supper. It's food is actually going to be, you know, food's kind of an issue. We are hoping that those screens that you can lick that have been invented, if I'm not mistaken, either in Japan or China, but you can lick screens, which taste like food apparently, but nourishment, you're wondering about nourishment, none of that up in this bitch. We're not wasting food on you on your way out. Dude. Let's be real. Okay. Calories for them living folks. If you're going to be, if you're on that zero cal diet on your last mini virtual diet, that's, you know, just as long as you taste and as long as it feels like food, I think that'll suffice. That's what I'm pushing. And yeah, we make these pods in different colors, the fun colors too. I don't want you to think that these like killer pod 5000s are going to be some like dystopian, like off white or like a, or like a, a gray that's like, oh, hospital gray. Yuck. No, I'm talking fucking all the colors, dude. On These pods are going to be beautiful. Maybe neon, neon pods, dude, with music. And, and lights so that when you're out when you're when you're about to go out this is we're celebrating you going out and you're like man i wish there were other options available to me it's, <laughs> it's fucking dreamer out there okay this all right you, you quit it stop being silly all right it's 15 bucks an hour dude if, with 15 bucks an hour if you can't afford to pay your bills and buy a million dollar home over two, three generations, like you won't be able to, but like, you know, if you, if you can like maintain everything together, if you can just like, you know, if you can like not succumb to the pressures of uh, the economy and maintain your family and not fall apart and not have your like, oh man, oh, all oh, money matters. And all those arguments month after month, if you can maintain that for like 30, 50 years, then your kids might be able to like take that home with a with a second mortgage on it and you know hopefully they can follow the, into like further debt and by then if we're paying millions of dollars for square footage right now i can only imagine this is gonna be mad bubbles either keep on increasing or at one point they're bursting right so it's a repetitive cycle that we tend to go down and repeat every 8 10 20 years in different formats we try to remedy it and like you know just put it under the rock baby just because everybody needs to because we're at the end of the day at the end of the day, it's it's been brought to us by, I guess, you know, and that's the thing, it's it's not just one thing, but if it's me, if it's, it's, there's definitely a problem in banking, I feel like, but that's just me, but that's just me. I'm talking, you know, monthly fees, I'm talking overdraft fees, I'm talking large interests, I'm talking, you know, just, oh, maybe a portion of it's got to do with banks. Maybe a portion of it has got to do with the way the monetary system is designed so to benefit maybe a handful of individuals. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's just, but that's just, you know, that's, could all be malarkey, could all just be mumbo jumbo, could all, could all just be that the banks are perfect and that you have not done the right math. Again, making 15, 20 bucks an hour if, if you know you're like oh how do i get a how do i get my toe in the market in the housing market so you know and that's you know what i mean do the math and like i've done the math K keep doing it you know what i mean but that's and you're like man you're setting the bar way too low you're setting the standards way too low huh? you know with but that's the thing you know when you just look at a few generations ago when people were able to get into the market and buy a home for fifty thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars and it was possible to do it on one person's salary, interesting, and raise a family, a nuclear family, who's supportive of nuclear power and energy. And it's just, you know, doing it big, doing it good. You're like, that was a thing. So I don't even know what I'm saying. Did inflammation get out of hand? Maybe it did, maybe, maybe we've got room for more inflammation. But at the end of the day, the clear message is that if you can't afford to live in these times and there are going to be you know it's just what they you know it's we need to you know we need to we need to just like you know we need to let some people loose that's what it is essentially at the end of the day you know it's 
maybe, you know, maybe it is new eugenics, maybe it's just like, maybe it's survival of the fittest, maybe it's, uh, maybe, you know, do we, you know, you're like, did other people try this? Did other people go around and essentially kind of, you know, people did it more forcefully, more overtly, you know, now this is kind of, I guess, it, it's kind of covert, kind of overt, you know, mixed bag of both, which is a nice way to sell something because you don't want to be like too overt with it because you go too overt with it. You'd have the examples of, let's say, from my, from my understanding, again, like places like Nazi Germany where people are like, oh, man, you know, based on, you know, race, based on ethnicity, based on, oh, you're, you're handicapped, you're, you know, you're this kind of person. We're just going to, you need to, you know, that, but that's like, maybe that's too far of an, extrapolation maybe that's sort of you know maybe that's maybe that's eugenics maybe this is just medical assistance maybe it's like not the words maybe it's the actions that should be but this is how we grow and this is how we grow it this is how we show it this is how we show it boys and girls ladies and gentlemen i want you to just know this okay all right i am not in any shape or form sponsored by this company made this this movement made like m-a-i-d all right we are m-a-d-e glad you made it as in like thank you for showing up i'd like you to keep on showing up all right i want us to tickle each other's membranes from afar from a near i don't want you that's just sheer coincidence all right that is some sick sick coincidence and i don't know how it worked out that you know we have similar sounding but i want you to know that this and this institution right here this family right here has got nothing to do with that that they know about the show did they make that program prior to this show i i think they did did i make the show the, and calling it glad you made it knowing full well that that thing exists out there yes maybe no i was aware of it but i forgot the acronym forgot the name and it's just, it's, you know, people are now signing up. But instead of signing up for that, what you could do, fam, come in here every Monday, every Wednesday and Friday, and follow your boy on Instagram. Search Rob Sadri or Glad You Made It on YouTube for the full-length videos. And fiscally, financially support this show. And this is how we grow it on Patreon.com slash Rob Sadri. One more time. Patreon.com slash Rob Sadri patreon.com slash rob sadry this is how we grow it i come in here i shoot the shit i talk about all this silliness and all this seriousness and i mix it up we're making jambalaya up in this you get this fucking crawfish up in this big ass bowl of jambalaya baby it's fucking mm, steaming in here mm, all the flavors of all the different places put into one under one roof under one setting and yeah, what do you think is, what do you guys and gals think is appropriate? Should people opt out if they're just, you know, if they're just, if you come in and you're tired of after a long day of, you know, putting in that five to eight hour shift, you're like, eh, I'm just gonna, you know, maybe that's an option. And again, if I, if I had anything to do with it and made those uh, pods vibrant, beautiful, and we could just like lay them out too. I could just, you know, we could like ever, you know, ever walk into a park and be like, oh, regular bench, <laughs> At least I'm so tired and over regular benches. Well, imagine you walk into a park and there's this like nice pod of sorts and it's like glowing pink and green, neon pink and green glowing. And it's got some sort of like, you know, futuristic EDM going on, a little light, you know, just a little lo-fi EDM going on in the background, you know, a little bit of ambient music. And you're like, oh, I'm just out here having a picnic with my best gal that I just met. And we're about to picnic and then go have some dessert, but I don't want to sit on a regular bench Let's go sit on this pod and we'll make it we'll make two little indents So that people can sit on it while somebody else is in there and that's just like circle of life dude So it's like right under your nose But it's like it's better to deal with it that way and I have to like look at some bum on the street and be like Oh, man smells like fucking ass in here, man I wonder how he's gonna like clean this up and the other day man. I was Kind of broke my heart but kind of like it's just like oh man i was walking down the street fam as i normally does and there was a homeless person on the street on the sidewalk young man maybe in his mid 30s and every time each and i think this is kind of relatable every time you walk past a 
person who's homeless. I mean, there's a part of you, if you can, you sometimes help. If you can't, you can't and you walk by. And there was this moment where this, because it's, it's mad. It could live, like, it can happen to anybody, whether it's from, like, whatever. Anyway, my point is, I was walking by, I saw this homeless dude on the, on the sidewalk and he was just like sitting, crouching with his hand out asking for money. And there was a grandma who walked by and the light turned, the pedestrian light turned red. So we all had to stand for it to turn green so we can proceed. But at that time, as we were all standing at the intersection, the homeless gentleman asks for a little bit of change. And the closest person to him was this cute little grandma. So I thought she was cute, dude. I had my headphones on, but like low level volume so I could still hear her. So he said, do you have some change, ma'am, or something along those lines? And she came back with this like, if I give you any, you will just spend it on drugs. No. And then the light turned green and she walked away. And I was just like, oh my God. Oh my God, what a cold hearted bitch, dude. Here I was just like listening to my music. She's not a cold hearted bitch, but like, I'm listening to my music. I'm like, man, you know, you see something on the corner of your eye, you see it in the periphery, you're like, oh, my heart's going out. Can't do much about it. I didn't have any change. I didn't have anything on me. And, uh, yeah, and sometimes when you can't do anything, you just like you you walk on by. That's that's what it is. But to hear that is like, what what else is he gonna spend it on? What else, if you're gonna reach into your pant pocket and like grab a toonie, for example, and give him? What else is he gonna spend? Like it's it just. But we have so easily become so detached and like oh that is we we easily look at somebody and be like that is a oh that, that person's a bad person because they're on the street or you know they're stinky or they, they, you can see them like oh shit stains all over their pants and it's easy to like you know write people off and i'm not saying you know and he, i'm not saying i was helping or anything but i don't even know why i shared that story it's just easy to be like forget about people whether it's on the street or somebody else out there's what i'm trying to tell you that is maybe having a difficult time whether it's from physical ailments or mental health issues and concerns and they can't you know if they can't pay bills like you know minimum bare necessities a roof over your head and some food to eat i think in a place like canada and north america that should not be the case for anybody obviously if you're able and capable go out there and work and hustle and grind and get some dessert in the meantime because life's a journey you got to eat some dessert every once in a while you know what i mean but for individuals who legit fall under hard times i hope that we could find a way to provide them with adequate housing so that they can you know and keep them fed, keep their essential services up and running. So that, that I think is life with dignity. If we're really in search of dignity, if we're not about it, about it, if we're just front out here in China, you know, paraphrase a dirty little business to make it seem good, then that's a different story. But uh, to each their own. And again, we are the masters of our own destiny and sip sip to the gang and thank you once again for all the love and support <laughs> mondays wednesdays fridays glad you made it it's been a social production thank you very much i'll see you guys back here again on wednesday keep talking about it spread it like drugs and a good std rock and roll baby see you guys soon peace out